All right, everybody, welcome to Rana's Radar. Here I am at Streetside Classics, here to check out more cars for you. Matt, how's it going? It's going good. Awesome showroom. I've just stepped in. A lot of cars here. That's right. A lot of awesome cars. What's your role here at Streetside? Uh, I'm the inventory consultant, so I handle bringing cars in, making sure we've got inventory to sell. You're the main guy. At least for uh, my I'm video right of, here. <laughs> I'm one of two guys in our inventory department. Here. Okay, so you know what you've got here on the floor. Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. Well, we're just here. We've just walked in. Check out the Roadster. This definitely drew me. Wow. This is when you see show car level. That's right. Now this has been featured, does that mean it's featured on your YouTube channel or on the website? Uh, so featured cars are, it's kind of a program that we offer on some of the, the higher end or more unique stuff. Um, this being more of a show car, uh, you know, it's up here in our front office uh, as a featured car. Uh, just a cool fiberglass body, 33 Roadster with a 454 Chevrolet engine in it. Nice. Something like this, I always think it gets closer to the six-figure mark. Is that the case here? No, this one's actually, uh, we have stickered, I think, at 49995 49 Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, these Roadsters, uh, they're coming down on the prices, which is a good thing because they're never, they're timeless. Mm -hmm. They never go out of style, mm -hmm. and um, they're becoming a little bit more affordable. Let's check out the interiors here for you a lot at home. It's in door poppers, beautiful. Streetside Classics is another big dealership across the country. And you guys have got several locations. We've got a couple of them on the channel, so I will put links so you guys can see those other showrooms. But we're here in Nashville. Remind us, what, uh, where else do you have the showrooms at? So we're one of six, and we've got Charlotte, Atlanta, Dallas, Texas, uh, Tampa, and... Phoenix. Okay, Phoenix and Dallas. I definitely want to try those mm -hmm. ones out as well. Let's go inside because I know you've got a heck of a lot more over there. Mm -hmm. All right, how big is your showroom, Matt? Uh, this building is about 50,000 square foot. Nice. We have probably 240 cars in here at the moment. Well, your turnover time is pretty quick. Yeah, we, uh, you know, the cars are here on a 90-day consignment term. We're always trying to get it done before then. Um, and we sell anywhere from 30 to 50 cars a month out of just this showroom. Wow, and you've got the platforms that you sell that are obviously here in the showroom for people who walk in, but it's also online? Of course, yeah. We have, obviously, our website, which is streetsideclassics.com, and every car gets listed on probably about 20 different websites. Oh, wow. Yeah, so pretty much anywhere you would look to buy a classic car, we advertise there. That's pretty cool because, you know, it takes, you guys take the hard work out. Selling That's a right. car That's is right. not easy. You know, you go on Facebook Marketplace or you try to list it in all the cars for sale stuff, but you, you cover all that. You cover all the grounds. We cover it all, yeah. We cover it all. Awesome. Let's start off right here. Got to see the truck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one is a 1970. Chevy K20. It's a big restored 4x4 truck. It's got a small block engine in it, automatic transmission. Nice. Short bed, lifted. I do like the lifted trucks. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a 72. Okay, Cheyenne 350. This is listed for 64,995. I want to give you guys a good look here at the sticker as well. It's got 396 V8, so that's been upgraded. It's definitely been restored. This one's on airbag suspension, so it's got a controller inside and you can set your ride height and everything. Nice. Can I open this? Yeah. They've restored it back. It's 
to its original look love the wood grain and yes I'm smiling because I've got my 72 and we'll see how that comes out when it's finished gotta love these trucks everybody short bed does a look at the wood beautiful there is a lot now we've got mm -hmm. some <laughs> I love the positioning you guys have done here is that intentional with the, the 50s cars up here yeah yep, yeah, we've got the, the classic 57 and matador red this is the 57 Berlay. beautiful and what's the price on this Matt? this one most recently 86.995 but I think we just updated that and I don't, I don't remember exactly what so it, it might be a little bit less yes very popular and they just never go out of style so the price for these hardly do come down too much mm -hmm. Okay, then you've got the Ford Wagon. Now this is a Resto mod. It's the Ranch Wagon 1956. It's listed for 49995 Black on black. This one has a later model fuel injected 4.6 liter V8 out of a Lincoln Mark 8. Okay. And that would explain the price as well. That's right. Yeah. We've got a later model Challenger here. And that's the thing with street side classics. It's not just about the classics. You, every now and then you do have the later model cars. Yeah. Anything classic or collectible. And these have become a collectible now. That's right. As so, they, as they're you know, quitting making them. Yep, they're turning them into electric. But this is the Hellcat Red Eye, everybody. Twenty twenty two hundred nineteen thousand and nine nine five. It's beautiful. Reminds me of the Plum Crazy from the seventies Charger. Hell raisin, kind of like a um, the raisin that you eat. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is beautiful. Definitely a collectible. So if you've got one, keep it. All right. What else have you got, Matt? There's lots here. What do you want to show me? There's so much to see. Oh boy. <laughs> All kinds of good stuff. Got a couple cool hot rods up here. A really nice uh, 34 Ford Coupe. Uh, that's a five window with a later model uh, Ford uh, 302 motor in it. A five window coupe, okay. And unlike the, uh, the yellow one in the lobby there, this is an all steel, uh, steel bodied car. So that's where you see a lot of the, the price difference in these, you know, 33 and 34 Fords. Absolutely. That makes a big difference. All steel Ford. This one is 115. It shows. I mean, there's beautiful restoration that has been done here. This is immaculate, everyone. And it's a five window, which makes it extra unique as well. Yeah, it's just a little different. You don't see them often. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is different now. <laughs> this one is a, a more modern build. It's a factory five kit, still a 33 Roadster, but it's got a uh, 427. Okay, but it's one of the kit cars. That's right. So it's got a more modern chassis with, you know, suspension that can handle the power and, and, uh, and all that. 
I've seen a few kit cars. I've seen them in the obviously the Shelby Cobras had them, which is mm -hmm. very high end, and and they're not, and they're not cheap. You can get exactly what you want without paying the millions of dollars for those for, rare collectibles. Right. Yep, uh, Factory Five has been making this kit. Um, I'm not sure for how long now, but there's there's a few of them running around. Most of them have you know three O twos or fuel injected five liters. So this one's pretty unique having uh, having that four twenty seven. Do they give the engine as well, or just the body? It's u usually just the body and the chassis. Okay. I mean, you can't deny it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> a lot of fun. Reminds me of the Prowlers. That's right. Okay, and what is this listed for? This one... Being the inventory guy, I'm expecting you to know the answer to all the prices. For all, for all 200 for cars. Um, this one is now... Uh, I think we've got it priced in the middle 80s. Middle 80s, okay. I don't know about you lot at home, but that looks pretty cool. Loving the color. Okay, we have a Porsche here. 911, wow. Yeah, this is a 88 911 uh, that's been upgraded, modified in the uh, like RSR style, which is kind of the, the racing cars back then. This one's got racing bucket seats and it's got an upgraded uh, carburetor swap. This one's really cool. Wow, just build to speed. I'm surprised they kept the back seats in there. Mm -hmm. 88. Porsche 911, everybody, and it's listed for 116,995 in true street side classics fashion. It's all 995 at the end. <laughs> Love that. Okay. Got the Chevy sedan. It's the Deluxe, yeah, the Master Deluxe. Thirty-eight, and it's listed for forty-two nine nine five. A little bit more wear and tear, but still in very good condition. Check out the interiors. Love that. Absolutely love that. All right, let's go see some muscle cars. Hold on a second. Model T? Yep. 23 Model, 23 Model T, everybody. They've got their whole, whole own following, the Model T Club. And you can be a part of that for 17995 <laughs> That is so cool. Need some love, but it's a Model T, everybody. Oh, and you've got a pace car here. No sticker on this. Is this sold or just come in? Uh, this one, we just need to put a new sticker in. I love the judge. Now these are not cheap. Yes, yeah, so this is a 69 GTO uh, with the Ram Air Hood. We don't believe this to be a true judge. The uh, build date doesn't line up with when they built the judges, so this one's a judge tribute as we would call it. Okay. Uh, but otherwise a really nice GTO. That's so cool. So you go and you do the research for the car, so obviously the mm -hmm. next people buying it, they're not getting fooled or anything. Not that you would get fooled exactly. by this. Yeah. So we want to 
represent them as best we can. Um, and that means a lot of research. Okay, well out of curiosity, how do you know or what part of the car would tell you on when it was built compared to? So uh, Pontiac is really nice in that you can request uh, a lot of paperwork from the Pontiac Historic Society. Okay. And they can dig up all kinds of records and they would tell you if this was born a judge or not. Uh, from what we found, this one is likely not a judge because it was built in November of 68. Okay. And as far as we can tell, they didn't start building the judges until about January of 69. Oh, wow. Okay. But the people who wanted to consign with you, did they tell you this information or no? Well, sometimes, um, you know, they can they can tell us what they know, but right. we're, al we're always going to try and, you know, prove what we can. Because they could have just bought it thinking that it was a real judge That's as right. well, which That's is right. sad, but... And we, we have to confirm engine size all the time, where this one has a uh, Pontiac 455 in it, uh, and we want to advertise it as such rather than... 400 or whatever yeah. it might be but it's beautiful mm -hmm. it's not yet for sale a waiting video I mean unless you know what you're looking for nobody would be able to tell you mm -hmm. know they've got the tachometer on the outside as well and it's just everything fits it's got all the right stuff yeah. I love the fact that Streetside Classics, you guys have got the lifts. Of course. So if someone is very interested, serious buyers, mm -hmm. you guys are able to pull the car up on the lift so they can have an examine it or exactly. bring their own people. And we also use them to confirm plenty of things and we like to check them out before, you know, we sign anything to make sure it doesn't it's not overcome with rust or it doesn't have poor repairs yeah because those cars are going to go home and because we don't want to offer those to our buyers and so you've got your own staff like when it comes to mechanics and technicians so to we have don't have any mechanics on staff okay um, we take them in and, and sell them as is uh, if something happens to need work uh, after being consigned, we have some local guys that will come in and they can work on stuff for us. But we don't uh, we don't do any kind of mechanic or restoration sh or work in house. Okay. Broncos are popular, getting popular by the month. That's why they're not cheap either. Now this is coming soon, 1974 Bronco. Matt, what do you think this is going to be getting listed as? I believe the sticker on this one is fifty nine 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 five. Yeah, that'll be right. And this still needs work, but it just shows you how popular the Broncos are now. So, who decides on the price? Yourself or the customer, or together? Well, we all kind of work on that together. You know, we want to take them in at um, at a price that we think is market appropriate and therefore sellable. Um, and then the, the final list price is set by our sales manager. Okay. And that can vary based on certain things, you know, whether there's a, a strategy we want, to take, we want to take with a certain car, or if um, the market is you know, very specific on a certain car, we want to make sure that we're hitting it right on the dot. Which makes sense because you guys know the market. Mm -hmm. You've seen what other cars have sold for in the past as well. Yeah. And if we've got a bunch of cars that are overpriced, it yeah. doesn't do us or our sellers any good. And we've been seeing on some of the other um, dealerships as well, the amount of work and effort somebody puts in does make them think that the car is worth a lot more than what someone might be paying for it. Okay. All right, Matt, what have you got here? This is a 68 Ford Fairlane. This is beautiful. Something a little different. It's not a Mustang or a Camaro. But the big cars are coming back in.
And is that 351? Or? Correct. Nice. This one's got Edelbrock aluminum heads. It's got uh, Hydra Boost power steering. It's been hot rodded a little bit. Now, what is this listed as? This one is 41995. 41995. It's not bad. Everything is done. There's hardly anything that you would need to do in this except enjoy it. Like the interiors. Okay, and we've got a GTO tribute. And this one actually says tribute on it. That's right. Yeah. With these, um, this one's a 65. Uh, and it's pretty easy to tell with these uh, because there's a VIN sequence that will tell you whether or not it is a true GTO. Which this one was born uh, uh, Le Mans. Okay. It's got all the GTO stuff. This is for thirty nine 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 five. I don't know about you, Laura, at home, but when I see these prices for such beautiful classics, it's just you'd be paying a lot more for a modern day car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is so much here. I've got no idea where to go, but let's just move along. Now there is a big inventory online as well at streetsideclassics.com so you can definitely browse the cars so don't get upset if I'm walking past something that you're eyeing in the background. <laughs> okay, this is pretty cool. This, cool, this car has a cool history. Uh, it's a 1980 Camaro. It was owned by the, uh, the gentleman who's selling with us with Selling it with us has had it for 35 years. 35 years? Yeah. And he, when he bought it, it was a standard V6 car in a, like a lighter bronze color. And over the years, he's added you know, the V8 and now it's got nice red paint on it. A lot of uh, Z28 and Trans Am uh, suspension upgrades yeah. to it. Love the nose here. And you know that when someone does that, especially with a classic that they've had for such a long time, you know it's well looked after. Check out the interiors in here, everyone. You sit in this, you know you're going back in time. Mm -hmm. Just the feel of it. And what is this listed as now? This one just came in the other day. We don't have a list price on it yet, but I think it'll probably be around uh, middle 20s. Really? That low? Yeah, I mean, it's creeping up on what, uh, you know, a Z28 might cost. Mm -hmm. And being an original V6 car, not having the numbers matching engine, it's probably, you know, about where we feel it should be. I love that you guys consider all factors. You know, of course. You tick all you, the boxes you when you're to. listing something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. It's nice to see. Okay, what is this? So this is a Mustang II. Uh, I, don't, I didn't check this one in. I don't know the exact year. Uh, this one's... Uh, is the Fox Body ones? No, this is in between... Uh, you know, those... Mac one is it's in between the Mark ones. That's right, and the Fox bodies. And the Fox bodies. So I've never seen one. I thought kind of, it might be something someone. They're they're not super popular because um, they were they weren't quite as sporty as the the Mustangs before it, so they don't have quite the following. But they're they're cool little cars. Yeah. That's pretty cool, everyone. I've seen things I have not seen before. Now this is awaiting for a video. You get the video, is that available for online or is yeah. it on YouTube? Yeah. So our photographer, he's here full time. He takes a good <laughs> 150 pictures of each 
each car, wow. and then every car gets a like a light video shoot, um, and there's probably a four or five minute video that every car gets on our website. Love that. Okay, loving green on green these days, everybody. Let's have a look at this Impala. No, it looks like what, 62 or a 63? 60. A 60. Wow, this is beautiful. Talk to me, Matt. There's no sticker here. Let's see. Eighty six nine nine five is the number on it. It's got a two eighty three V eight two speed power glide transmission. This is all original. Uh, it's had it's been updated, but it is um, partially a survivor. Okay, wow. It's been kept really well wherever it kept was really kept. Well, yeah. You can tell from the trim and the insides as well. It's beautiful, everyone. Loving the Impalas these days. 90,000, but that's a big car. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of car there. Okay. Let's go around this way. We saw some trucks there too. I'll call it a hot rod. <laughs> Something for everyone, right? Okay, see what the price on this. 44995. Now it's a five window coupe. Why do you think the price is up there, Matt? Uh, just because of the, uh, the work that's been done. It's had a lot of body work. They call this uh, chopped and channeled, where they take a few inches out of the, uh, the window line, and then they also take some, some out of the, uh, the center of the body to, to make it nice and small give it that hot rod look. So it's had a mid chop as well in the middle. Chopped and channeled. Yep. Chopped and channeled. Looks good. And it's a, this one is also all, all steel, all metal. There you go. And the interiors have all been done up as well. Mm -hmm. Custom gauges. And all right, there's a lot of battery here. I know that's the fuel tank, but what's going on back here? So this, we believe, is a um, well, just some some tidy wiring work, and then it's got two six volt Optima batteries in series. So the car is wired to six volts, but for packaging reasons, they use the two smaller six volt batteries. Creative. <laughs> right. Uh, LS swapped Resto Mod 69 Camaro. Uh, we got this one in a trade recently, um, which we do occasionally do. Um, you know, we're primarily consignments, but we do also purchase outright, as well as uh, make some trading work whenever whenever we can. Um, this one we're gonna update the sp suspension a little bit, just make sure it's uh, safe and ready to go, and then we'll, we'll get it. Uh, Advertised and sold. Okay. They don't have the flip up headlights on this right. one. Yeah, so the RS models got the uh, got the hideaway headlights. Yep. It's one of my favorite features of the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so give you guys a look on the inside if you're trying to get involved. This is something I feel like won't be too high up in the price though you guys are not sure yet because you haven't um, assessed it that's right if I'm gonna guess probably in the 70s 70s oh, I was hoping you would say lower than that yeah. <laughs> the oh, Camaros yeah. are up there in the prices these the days the 69 Camaros are very popular and uh, the price reflects that yep yep I thought maybe in the 40s now, if, if you can find a 69 Camaro in the 40s, I, I suggest you grab it. 
<laughs> no, they are they are very very popular, and I've, all the ones that I've seen that have been redone have always been in the seventies. Mm -hmm. I just thought that maybe because this might need a little bit more work. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get it cleaned up and get it dialed in as much as we can. Because then... the body's beautiful, mm -hmm. still there. Yeah, this one's interesting with the the painted bumpers on it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Got some later model ones. So we've got a 396 Camaro here. What is the price for this now? This one is 54995. 54995. And because this is the what year is this? 68. It's a 68. So what makes the 69 so popular? It's a one-year body style. Okay. So there, it's pretty similar to the 68 and 67, but the front end is a little bit different and the wheel arches are different. The front end's wider. That's right. It's a lot wider than this and the wheel arches. It's so good for me to know because I had no idea. And there's other differences as well, but those are the the main ones that I look for. You can see the, the fender well in the front goes up and then continues back into the door. It screams more muscle than the 68 I just agree. by looking at it. It's got more of a race car slant to it as well. And I never knew that before so thanks for that Matt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. Awesome. This is a really cool example. It's a factory four-speed car with the numbers matching 350. Okay. There you go, everybody. Camaro Z28 listed for 36995. Four-speed manual. It's in fair condition. That's awesome. See the headliner. This thing with the Camaros, they vary so much in the prices. That's right. Yeah, these, uh, these later Model 1s are still working their way up in, in popularity. Yeah. And then you've got another Z28 right next to it. And this, this is a, means... a tribute car, so not a, not a factory Z28. Which is why it's listed for 29000 Right. For just under 10,000 more, you could get the real thing. Okay, Pontiac Silver Streak. Very nice. And this is a 60s model? Uh, 48, I believe. 48, wow. Yeah, kind of a, kind of a street rod. You know, it's been upgraded with a... I believe a 350 V8 and a you know, automatic transmission, so something that you can use a little easier than you would a, a normal 48 Pontiac. Everybody loves seeing these at the car shows, at the cruisings. It's what YouTubers like to run over and get pictures of and videos of because they just look so cool whether they're stationary or driving along. Right, right. What's the price on that? I don't recall, but it is sold. Oh, it's sold. Mm -hmm. Well, we won't worry about it then. <laughs> wow, quite a collection here. All right, we've got to look at the lifted truck. Mm -hmm. And you've got a military tank here as well. Jeep. This one's a 53 M38. Willie's Jeep. Did the shovel come like that back in the day? What was it for? <laughs> well, you see, it's got the shovel under the hood, and yep. it's also got an axe over on the side. Just a shovel and an axe. You know, I, I watch too many horror movies sometimes. <laughs> this is oh wow. No shooter's seat, but we do have. I'm guessing it's the gun stand. Yeah, and you've got a, cartridges, box as well. This is pretty cool. Unfortunately, just a just a replica. 
So someone's made this, okay. There's the X. I won't say exactly what I'm thinking. You all will think I'm a freak, but anyway, still pretty cool. Replica nonetheless. What's the price? Uh, $29,995. $29,995. And why is there three sticks here? So the first is for your three-speed manual transmission, and then these are this is for your transfer case to engage low and high range uh, four-wheel drive. Oh. I wouldn't have any clue what to do with that. But let's have a look at this. This I definitely drew me. The Bonanza, what is this? This is C10. Yes, yeah, 78 K10. So K10. Four-wheel four -wheel drive. Uh, Bonanza was a, an equipment group or a, a trim level back then. Uh, and we have the window sticker from this truck that tells us that it was a Bonanza. It also has uh, all the Silverado equipment, so it's got you know, all the gauges and everything like that. Okay. Well, I'm a shorty, I can't see, but I will toss you guys in there to have a look. This is awesome. Beautiful. I mean, it costs a lot of money to do a restoration and get something to look like this. And what did, what did you say was under the hood? Uh, it's a 350 V8. 350 V8. Oh. And what's the price on this one? 49995 I believe it is sold. I'm not surprised. So much easier. Stop all the work and just buy something and drive off with it. That's beautiful. The Golden Eagle. Let's have a look at this Jeep. Very different. Reminds me of the thing. But it's not. Yep. What, what year is this? It is late 70s. 77? Okay. There's, this, there's a paper there. Does that mean it's sold? No, this is just a window sticker. It is a 78. Okay. CJ5. CJ5. It's listed for 36995 Got another Camaro here now, for argument's sake, let's still look at this one. Check it out. Now, if this is a 67. A 67, and it's a tribute one as well. Okay. And it's listed still for 59995 everybody. It's got the Super Sport 427 under the hood. Tell me your thoughts on tribute cars versus the original cars. If you're a collector, I guess that really matters. But yep. I mean, other than that, it's it depends on you know your use for the vehicle. Mm -hmm. If, like you said, if you're a collector looking for the most correct vehicle that you can, you're going to be seeking you know a, a true SS, yeah. a true Z28 with documentation and all that all that kind of stuff but um, you know if you're a driver uh, just looking to you know, have fun with it go to car shows um, you know a tribute car does all the same thing exactly you know nowadays you can you can buy all the parts and you can you can make it into you know nearly a true SS or or whatever it may be and uh, have just as much fun Exactly. And, just, uh, and not everybody is going to ask you all these details. You know, nosy people like me might come out to you to the car shows and say, what have you got, sir? But mm -hmm. most of the time you're going to be driving it, enjoying it. That's right. 
and people are just going to see you drive by the street. So I don't mind the idea at all. A lot of Camaros, isn't That's it? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Camaros, Chevelles, and Mustangs are our top three. And so we, uh, we try to stay stocked up with them. And that's because you know that the market is there for it as well? Exactly. You know, they, the appeal is really wide. So we know there's going to there's gonna be someone there who's going to appreciate it. Who's going to appreciate it. Yeah. This is a really nice car. Just a really clean convertible with a big block. Nice. This is not a tribute car. It is. Oh, it is. Okay. So, with these tribute cars, is there kits out there that people just buy and put them all together? Pretty much, and you know. A a tribute can be any, anywhere from you know, just the SS badges to the full suspension mm -hmm. and different engine. You know, there's a, and you can go any which way with a tribute car. 1967, and it's listed for 79995. Looks beautiful. It's very clean. Check out the interiors. From what I've been seeing at the shows and awards, the big cars are coming back. 2024, 2025, you are going to see a lot more of the bigger cars um, getting either massive restorations or turned into custom show cars, but it's coming back. Okay, now we've got some more trucks. And Ford Bronco, another one. I'm always curious to see the prices of these, just because they're so hard to find project wise yeah so this is a what you 68 thanks man your eyes are better than mine <laughs> yeah so this is this is one of the the higher end uh, early broncos that we have right now uh, it has a 302 v8 in a tremec uh, five-speed manual transmission you can see that the engine bay has been detailed out and painted properly. Oh, yeah. This one also has a really cool uh, sliding top feature. So like the uh, like the ragtop Volkswagens, someone's installed a sliding uh, you know roof in it. Oh, that is so neat. Yeah, you can still, being a Bronco, still remove the top. Yeah, the top. But that's a lot of work, and they're very heavy. Is it? Mm -hmm. I did wonder about that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you'll need two people. At least. At yep. least two people. Mm -hmm. And with one this nice, you worry about the paint job underneath, uh, whether, you know, because on some of the later ones, you can notice there's uh, though you'll get chips or scratches from the area where you would remove or reinstall the top. I had no idea about that. I thought it might be a little bit more of a seamless process to remove the top because I do love the look of the Ford Broncos and I'd be lying if I said that I have not looked continuously over the last few months <laughs> on Marketplace of try to find a project or something if I could get my hands on it. But hearing that, that's... um. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's another one of those classics where you can get a lot of aftermarket parts for it these days, as well as body parts too. Ford Fairlane, what year is this, Matt? This one's a 59. 59. It's a Fairlane 500 Sunliner. So these you could get with either a soft top or a folding hard top convertible. Uh, this one is a soft top. Hard tops are pretty uh, pretty sought after. Okay. You know they've kept it well when it's got plastic covers over the seats, mm -hmm. right? You gotta love that. 
I grew up in a house where things were covered with plastics. <laughs> I get it, 90s child. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the roadster here. High boy for passenger. Why is it called a high boy? So that's, uh, as far as I know, just the style of hot rod uh, with the, the open wheels for, for the, uh, the, the early 30s uh, Ford Roadsters. No fenders, no running boards. And this one is unique because it is a four seater. Mm. I get a bit of a Boyd Coddington feel mm -hmm. here. So this is for, it's got back seats as well. Usually they don't. Correct. A lot of work done here. Check out the, wow, I like it. I like it a lot. Wow. You gotta gotta find the right person who's looking to spend that money on, on exactly this. Looking for a, a fun car for the weekends to That's and, and that's what it is about these classics, isn't it? It's not about it's not like the modern day cars where you see whatever's the market rate is, that's how it goes by. It does go by I mean the market out there and people who are looking at it and the different tastes. I see something like this and I'm like, Wow, this is cool. There's a lot of work involved. And then I'm thinking only 30, I mean, I actually thought it might have been like 89,000 at one stage. I think Boyd did have something like that yeah. in one of the videos that I have seen. Okay, we do have to check this out. I hope my camera does justice because this color is so beautiful. Turquoise. Feels like a turquoise maybe, yeah? Uh, 55. 55. So 55 was like a, a half year for these trucks. So this was the last year for this first generation style of the 3100. And then later in that year, they went to the second generation of the 3100s. Okay. So in the one year, they brought out two trucks? Pretty much. Is this stock what it would have been besides the yes. paint, obviously? Yeah. That's uh, the bumper is interesting. Stock grill, stock bumper. Um, under the hood, it's pretty stock. Um, just a standard straight six with manual brakes, manual steering. Really makes you feel like you're driving a 55, right? Right. <laughs> this is beautiful, everyone. All right, we've got some ponies on the right, and then we've got Chevelles here on the left, everybody. Let's take a look at some of the prices here. So what have we got here? We've got... So this one's a 67 uh, Chevelle SS convertible. Being a 67, we know that it is a true SS car. Uh, we've got this one stickered at 74995 uh, this one's pretty cool. This is a pretty special car, uh, 70 Chevelle SS. Um, this was a tricentennial edition, uh, which they sold out of South Carolina for the tricentennial of the state. I, I don't recall how many they sold. I don't think we know how many have sold, but there's only maybe 13 or 14 that are known. Uh, to still exist. Wow. And this is one of them. Sticker price on it is one nineteen nine nine five. One twenty nine, sir. Uh, we have we have since updated. Okay. But uh, this. I, sh I shouldn't be correcting their inventory okay. manager. Okay. Everybody uh, would know better than the actual papers there. Yeah. Okay, one nineteen nine nine five, and because it is a bit more rare and. That's right. Yeah. One of only goodness fourteen fifteen out there. I would say so. This, uh, this car would have originally been gold, and it, at some point over its history, someone painted the, the classic red and black. But it's uh, still a big black, still four speed. Okay, for those of us not looking for something rare and collectible, <laughs> what have we got here? A uh, couple 65s. Uh, this blue one is a uh, Malibu. 
the red one is a Chevelle SS. Um, in 65, we can also tell that this one is a true, uh, true SS car. Pretty standard, you know, small block with manual steering, manual brakes, but uh, just a just a fun little car. Okay, so the price for the Malibu is thirty-seven nine nine five. Okay, and this one we just updated to thirty-six nine nine five. Nice. Let's have a look at the Mustangs. So this one's pretty cool. This is a. GT tribute, so someone's gone and put all the GT stuff on it, like the badging and the uh, and the fog lights. Okay, it's listed for fifty-seven nine nine five. This is a convertible, everybody. Nineteen sixty-five. Very clean, nice. Okay, so 57995 and then moving down, let's see the prices of these other Mustangs for you guys. I know there's been a lot of Mustangs on the channel. Did have ponies in the Smokies. There's a link in the top right hand to check out that show and meet some of the people that own the classics as well as the modern day Mustangs. But here in the, I always call this baby blue, mm -hmm. powder blue, what have we got? 66 and mm -hmm. it's listed for 27995 all right fire boat there's just so much here but i do want to see the stingray everybody let's have a look hope you all have been enjoying this seeing the prices let me know your thoughts street side classics here in nashville is where i'm at all right, Matt, talk to me about the Corvette. Uh, this one's pretty cool. This is a 1970 Corvette, uh, 454. Uh, 70 was the first year of the 454. Uh, this is a numbers matching, original big block car. It's uh, in the factory. Original color and an original interior color. This one is believed to have really low original miles, somewhere around 30,000. Wow. Someone bought this and stored it away. That's right. <laughs> wow, very neat. Super cool. What is the sticker price on this? This one is 53995 Wow. This has been fun. I hope you have enjoyed it. Matt, what do you drive on the daily? I drive a Land Rover LR4. Okay, not bad at all. <laughs> but this is super cool. And um, yeah, hope you all liked it. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely.